Good evening. Welcome to the Lambs. My name is Kevin Fitzpatrick. I am the club historian. Welcome tonight uh, to a very distinguished guest, Don Murray, classic film actor. Um, a little bit about the club. It is America's oldest theatrical organization, professional theatrical organization, started in 1874. We're coming up on our 150th anniversary in 2024, so we're getting ready for that. Uh, we are fully open. A lot of clubs aren't open, but we are back in business, including this Friday, we'll have our, our uh, bi-weekly low jinx at the club. And on July 30th is our welcome back frolic at the club. So stop by for uh, some live entertainment, drinks and dinner at the clubhouse. I'm gonna turn things over to Magda Katz, who was our collie, which is the lamb's way of calling someone a producer. So welcome everybody. Uh, keep yourself on mute if you can. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. And we will also, uh, you can ask them when uh, the time is right. And Foster will be our host tonight. Thanks so much. Very good. Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome Mr. Murray, the distinguished actor, and our uh, wonderful interview of Foster Hirsch. So, Foster, I'm going to turn it to you. Okay, wonderful. And then after the interview, Magda, uh, yes. you or Kevin will handle some questions from the audience, right? Yes. I will. I talk to Don because some people might have some questions for Don. Very good. Wonderful, wonderful to see you, Don, across country. Well, same for me, for see you. For... Yeah, it's, it's great to see you. Uh, we're going to cover the waterfront tonight, Don. We're going to start at the beginning and go right up to the present and cover as many important uh, uh, highlights of your career as possible. Actually, I want to get started with something that you and I have, have talked about before, but I know the audience, this audience in particular, will be interested. You didn't fool around. You made your Broadway debut in Tennessee Williams' Rose Tattoo opposite Eli Wallach and Maureen Stapleton. That's is, right. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. How did you, how did you get the part? How did you audition? Uh, do you remember the circumstances? I did. I did a, a reading for it. Uh, I uh, got uh, the script and studied the script and then did a reading and uh, was selected uh, from uh, several other actors who did readings. I was fortunate enough to be selected uh, for the role. And who was the director of that again? It was Danny Mann. They, oh, my, that's pretty good. Yeah. When, when you were doing it, did you get to know Tennessee Williams at all? Did he come around to rehearse? Yeah, he, was, he was at uh, all the re rehearsals, and he was uh, very much a presence uh, all the time. And, uh, we, we all appreciated him being there. He was very appreciative of, of the work that was being done with his play, uh, and it was just the best of circumstance for all of us. Did, did he give you any pointers about how to play the part or, or, the, or Danny Mann was your director? No, he, he, he wouldn't do it. Tennessee would not do that. Would not do that? No, no. Any, that, any, that would be considered uh, infringing on the director's prerogatives. So he, he uh, deferred to the director, Danny Mann. But, he, but I believe he did tell you privately he was very pleased with what you were doing. Yes, yes, he did. What was it like playing opposite uh, Maureen Stapleton? Well, it was just wonderful playing with Maureen because she was such a terrific actress and very, very real, very genuine uh, in, in her emotions. So she was uh, uh, inspiring, as a matter of fact, to work with the Maureen Stapleton. And, and Eli Wallach? And Eli Wallach the same. Eli Wallach was a marvelous actor and a wonderful uh, example for a young actor like myself. And it's interesting because they were both playing Italian characters and neither one, Maureen Stapleton or Eli Wallach, is remotely Italian. No, <laughs> no, there, there are. There was real acting roles. About... That is, it's called acting, right? It's called acting, right? It's called acting, yes. Uh, but your next uh, theater assignment was also you weren't fooling around. And some of the people in the audience may not know your next assignment, but listen to this, folks. Don Murray was in a revival of The Skin of Our Teeth, 
which was chosen by the State Department to appear uh, on an international tour. And his yeah. co-stars were Helen Hayes, Mary Martin, and George Abbott. Yes, that's right. That now, you, right. Were, you were a newcomer. You were a yeah. youngster. Were you yes. intimidated at all uh, appearing in that crowd of veterans? No, I, I don't think uh, you're intimidated because uh, they, they are veterans, but the thing is that they do give very real performances. They're people that uh, perform uh, very, very realistically. So that's what you, you're you playing with, and uh, that, that's what you appreciate. Now, George Abbott, of course, was a great director, but he didn't direct this production. Alan Schneider did. No, he did didn't. George uh, Abbott direct at all or did he behave no, himself? He did no, and no he direction at all. He did no direction at all and left that all to uh, the director. Alan uh, Schneider. Alan Schneider. Alan Schneider. He did no he did no directing at all because directing oh. second nature to George Abbott. <laughs> That's right. So, was Helen, Helen Hayes was one of my favorites. She had the most beautiful voice. What was she like to work with? Oh, she was she was really an inspiration to work with. She was very very real uh, performance and uh, very very enri enriching. And just watching her was a real pleasure. Now, Don, we've never talked about this, and I wonder if you remember. In my research, I came across a play that you did right after Skin of Our Teeth, called The Hot Corner. Yes, that's right. I played a, a, a left-handed baseball player named Leslie McShane, and uh, it was a, a comedy, farce comedy. But, and, but it did not run. It was not a hit. No, it, it was not a hit. No, we uh, we got some good reviews, but uh, it didn't it did run long. It just uh, ran for oh, a few days on Broadway. And it was Sam Levine. Yes, Sam Levine directed. Directed and and co-starred, I think. Yes, and co-starred. And he was a wonderful stage actor. I saw him a number of times. Oh, he is marvelous. He wonderful, is really wonderful stage energy. Mm -hmm. Then Absolutely. after after these credits uh, on on the stage, you made your film debut in a not very well known movie called The Bus Stop, <laughs> based on a play yes, by I William Inge. And yes. you had a sort of famous co-star named Marilyn Monroe. That's what, right. That's what, what is now? What is now? Uh, uh, Don, what? Of course, you have you have a uh, quite a statistic uh, to your credit at the moment. Uh, you are Marilyn Monroe's only surviving co-star. That's what I understand. Well, I'm uh, very fortunate to be so. Can you tell us? Was she difficult to work with? No, not difficult to, to work with. Uh, she was very, very uh, real in the role. And uh, you, you felt that working with her, that you're working with a, a real person. And uh, you, you didn't get a sense that you were with the movie star. You were just a very fine actress working with you. But didn't, she have to, didn't you have to do a lot of takes working with her? We did quite a lot of uh, takes or working with her, yes, uh, but uh, not 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 uh, not so many that that have made it difficult for for anyone. Uh, you you didn't get a sense well you're you're doing too much. Uh, all the, all the takes seemed to be necessary, and uh, it was uh, just a, a pleasure to 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 do that. Did she? Did, but did. You, you had told me before that she did have trouble remembering lines sometimes, and she did have trouble remembering bits of business. So when you do a lot of takes, you had to be very good at your best in every take. She had to be that's good it. only once. Yes, that's it. Uh, that, that's the, uh, the challenge in the thing is that you've, you've got to be at your best uh, if that's possible for, for every take. And uh, so that's that's what you try to do. But 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 Ben, really quickly, really quickly, you also have to put her on her marks at times. Oh, right? yeah. And Joshua Logan told you that. that. Please yeah. put her on her marks, and also too, 
you needed to have your best performance because the best performance of hers in any given part was going to be the one that's printed. And also, you have to put her on her marks while, as well, um, doing the same. Yeah, that, that was absolutely true. He said to Don, uh, Marilyn is, is getting uh, out of uh, range of the camera and out of the lights. Uh, so when you see her getting out of the uh, camera angle or out of the lights, put your hands on her hips and move her back into the lights and into the camera angle. And so that's what I was doing during, during the scene. I was moving her on her marks, which is kind of interesting. He was a movie star for so many years. And here was this, this movie uh, uh, freshman me moving the star onto her marks. That was quite unusual. <laughs> But you said if she did hold things up, or if she was late to rehearsal, or if she made you do a number of takes, none of it was done out of meanness. No, there's no meanness at all with her. Not a bit. She was uh, very, very gracious working with. So you have you have the finest of memories. Shouldn't you got an Academy Award nomination for playing Bo? But in fairness, shouldn't she have gotten an Oscar nomination too? Did, 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 uh, uh, what was the question? I said, you got an Oscar nomination, deservedly, for yeah. playing Bo, but her Sherry was brilliant, and she yeah, did I, get I, an I Oscar so nomination. Too. I thought that she deserved a, a nomination herself. I was disappointed that she was not nominated. Uh, as a matter of fact, she was not never nominated for an Academy Award. No, no. And that, that was very unfair, because she was one of a kind talent. That's and true. People Absolutely. often judged her because she was so beautiful, but there was a, there was talent to back it up. That's Great talent. Right. That's right. Yeah. Now, was it Josh Logan who discovered you for the part of Bo? After all, you were playing a cowboy, but the, the dirty little secret is Don Murray is a New Yorker born in the Rockaways. You're not a cowboy. <laughs> I'm hardly a cowboy. I've never been on a horse. <laughs> and all, all that was very new to me. Uh, but uh, under direction, I just took the direction of, uh, of Joshua Logan and uh, just followed his direction and seemed to come out all right by doing that. But he believed in you for the part. He saw the part in you. Yes, he did. He uh, uh, was surprisingly, uh, he was insistent on my playing the role. And I was quite surprised at that because I... I didn't think I was particularly right for the role. I, thought, I was kind of astonished when he insisted that I play the part. Well, and then when you got your Oscar nomination, he was obviously right in his hunch about you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that was that was quite a, a surprise. But I, but I think because the part is so successful that people who know your career and know that you played in a lot of westerns, you're not a westerner. <laughs> I'm not. I'm a New Yorker, actually. Yes. <laughs> After um, Bus Stop, you uh, appeared in one of my two all-time favorite Don Murray performances. Um, the first one is A Hat Full of Rain, which yeah. is an extraordinary film, probably not as well known as it should be and not seen as often as it should be. But in it, you play a drug addict. And you're not a cowboy. You're also not a drug addict. So no, that's, that's true. How did you prepare for playing a character who had become, in the wartime, addicted to drugs? How did you prepare for that? Well, I actually, uh, when they bought the play for, for me, they expected me to play uh, the Tony Franciosa part, uh, and uh, who, who has a lot of comedy. And I, I said, no, I, I don't want to play that part. I want to play the drug addict. And uh, they were surprised by that. But uh, fortunately, they agreed. They said, OK, you want to be the drug addict? You're the drug addict. <laughs> so that's how it, it turned out. What kind of preparation did you do for the part? Oh, we we spent time in, in the local jails in New York and uh, <clears throat> on street corners and so on. And, at night and uh, where, where we saw, saw people shoot up. Actually in the, in the street corners, we, 
if they were taking drugs uh, in reality. <clears throat> and we uh, we photographed that all that, and uh, I I tried to, to learn from from what I was seeing in with them, and uh, I I, I uh, copied a lot of of uh, the mannerisms of the drug addicts themselves. When when uh, and I encourage our viewers to see the film. It's a great film and a great performance. When you are in a pain about drug withdrawal, your whole body seems to be responding and vibrating to the pain. What kind of sensory or physical memory work did you do to summon that kind of pain, which we see in moving through, throughout your body? Well, well I would actually uh, feel the pain. I actually would work myself into the point where I actually felt the pain myself, so I was really reacting to what was really going on within my my psyche and my and my body. This is actually really happening to me, uh, and uh, that, that's that's what enabled me to to form it, perform it uh, as I did. You also responded by also your sense memory came from having uh, root canal with no novocaine. And also an appendectomy with no painkillers uh, over there in, in Italy. Yeah, that, that's right. I had had in Italy, I had had an, an appendix operation without proper anesthetics and uh, had, had terrible pain from from that. And, and I, I brought that into my performance in the film. Okay. Isn't that what's called a sense memory? Uh, yes, I, I call it a sense memory. It's a yes, good description. Because when, when, when our audience sees that performance, which I encourage them to do, it's a great performance. It's incredibly realistic and it, you're, you're responding at such a deep level physically. It, 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 it's, it's very powerful. The, oh, the woman who plays your wife, um, the great Eva Marie Saint. Do you remember, Don, when we had a screening at the Arrow Theater in Santa Monica? And at the end of the screening, I got on stage and I said, ladies and gentlemen, the two great actors who you've just seen in Cat Full of Rain, Don Murray and Eva Marie Saint, and that entire audience stood and cheered. Do you remember that occasion? I remember that. That was quite astonishing. I was yes. very surprised at that and very, very pleased to see them reacting so well. Yes. And I'm, I'm so glad for the appreciation of Eva Marie for her performance because I I thought she was really an extraordinary actress and really good in the in the role. It, it, just terrific. And I think when she saw the film again, I don't think she'd seen it in a while. And then she, taking a second look, realized how good it is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a great film, directed by Fred Zinnemann, pretty yeah. good director. Terrific director. Ter terrific director. And Anthony Franciosa, never better. Yes. Absolutely. Though we've talked about this before, the character played by no Lloyd Nolan, your father, the father of your father and Anthony Franciosa's father, is a yes. complete jerk. He's <laughs> he, an idiot. He, he was he, really. Uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Nolan plays the part so well. He does. That I turned against him and I never wanted to see him again. Not fair. <laughs> Uh, that's that's me. That's called being too good in a role. Too good in the role. He was so convincing as this horrible father who got <laughs> everything wrong. He misjudged his sons. He got everything wrong. That, <laughs> same, <laughs> that, that same year, you were in a terrific uh, movie, Patty Chayefsky, a sort of follow up to Marty called The Bachelor Party. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. And that was produced by the people who did uh, last year's uh, Oscar winner, Marty. Marty, Marty. Yeah. Same, same, same group of people. And what was interesting in that film is Carolyn Jones has one scene at a party. It can't last more than three or four minutes. And she got an Oscar nomination and she's unforgettable. That's absolutely true. She deserves it and she got nominated first from that very, very bit part that she had. A bit part, but what she did with it was amazing. Did you improvise uh, at all in that 
the four actors who work in an office together and go out on the town, you all seem to know each other so well. Did you improvise at all? Yes, we did some improvisation. That's right, we did. And we incorporated what we learned from the improvisations in our performances. Because you can feel that th these are characters who know each other and understand each other's rhythms. You, you, people who've lived together and worked together every day, you can feel the connections among you. Yes, uh, that, uh, that's, uh, I'm pleased to say, uh, seems to be the case, yes. Now, with the, the, I think your next film, you worked with a director often known as a tyrant. <laughs> uh, Henry Hathaway. <laughs> no, no, we're not, we'll get to the other tyrant. No, Henry Hathaway. From oh, Henry Hathaway, yes. From hell to Texas. You once told me that he did a lot of screaming. Yes, he, he was he was a screamer. <laughs> yeah. How did you react to that? Well, what I did is I just turned it off. But, uh, I just would not let it bother me. I was con just concentrating on my role. And it didn't matter what he did as far as uh, you know, screaming or whatever he, he did that could be a distraction. I wouldn't let it distract me. Well, you wouldn't let it. Yes. <laughs> You moved on a few years later to what is my my favorite uh, Don Murray performance and favorite Don Murray film. I think it's your finest hour. Uh, and what's that? Advise and Consent. Oh, yes, absolutely. That's a great I'm, I'm film. Glad it's to the see. greatest film ever made about American politics. You had a tyrannical director who did a lot of screaming, Otto Preminger, but he was a darn good director. He knew how to make a film. Yes, he did. He certainly knew how to make that film. <laughs> did you have any hesitation playing a character, after all, this was a long time ago and it wasn't a common theme, who wasn't exactly homosexual, but who, uh, a senator who had had a gay relationship during the war, and then he's blackmailed and commits suicide. So you were playing some very delicate material, which was not at all common. It was a pioneering effort to to depict homosexuality in, in an American film. Did you yeah. have any hesitation about playing the role? No, I, I really didn't. Uh, to me, I realized that uh, it's something that might uh, be scrutinized and, uh, and might embarrass some actors, but it uh, did not embarrass me. It was just the, the role as written. I just played it as it was written. Did you think of the character as being gay or as the character who had had a gay relationship in the war out of loneliness? Well, you know, as, as I said in, a, in an interview at that time, uh, is, uh, you know, if, uh, why do you call him a homosexual? Uh, if uh, I hit one golf ball, do you call me a golfer? <laughs> that, was, that was my reaction to it. But he, he wasn't primarily a homosexual. But you did tell me that uh, that Otto was particularly hard on your leading lady, Inga Swenson, who has a very difficult part uh, oh, yes. in the film as your wife. Yes, that's true. Why was he so difficult on with her, was hard on her? Oh, well, he, he was... Uh, that seemed to be a habit of uh, of his that he would uh, pick on actresses and uh, and I, like uh, sensing that they have a sensitivity and that he would pick on them and uh, that 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 bothered me. I tried to I tried to alleviate that by uh, distracting him from doing that. But he didn't. He didn't pick on you. No, no, he didn't pick on me. And he was very kind to Jean Tierney. Yes, yes, he was. He was very, very kind to her. So he was very selective in who he would go after. Yes, he would. He must have sensed a vulnerability in Inga Swenson. And he I, felt, I think so. And he felt protective about Jean Tierney. Yes, absolutely. What was it like working with Charles Lawton in his last film? 
Oh gosh, what a what a privilege that was. Uh, what a great actor, Charles Lawton. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, he was so moving in that role, and in all his roles, like Mutiny you know, on the Bounty, he was just incredible in that. Wonder, what a wonderful actor he was. Uh, so it was uh, a real pleasure to be working with him. My he was, he was a perfectionist, wasn't he? He wanted everything just so. Yes, he was. He was a perfectionist. He, wor he worked on that Southern accent, apparently. He, yes, he did. He did. He, he worked on it uh, very, very astutely. And I thought it was pretty good, as far as I could tell. As far as I could I tell. It was good. Accent. It was convinced me. Yes, it was very convincing. Yeah. Now, how was it? How how was it like working with James Cagney? Speaking of working with legends, James Cagney. Well, that was really something working with Cagney. Uh, Cagney, uh, he would he would between takes he would uh, work out by by tap dancing, and uh, he he would with the setting up the next shot, he would tap dance off off camera, and. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. I had fun doing doing that. And I tried to do a little tap dancing uh, with him without him noticing. What, what what do you think the tap dancing did for him? Did it limber him up or keep him loose or in the it, moment? It, yeah, it kept him it kept him loose for for the moment. Yeah, I think that that helped him to relax and uh, get into the part. Uh, he. He was always a live wire on camera. He his his body seemed electric somehow. Perhaps yeah. that was a way of he, keeping he it. Was like a, he was like a pogo stick. Yes. <laughs> but he when he danced, he he bounced when he danced. It was quite like a pogo stick. Now you did a film called Hoodlum Priest that was very important to you. Yes, the Hoodlum you, Priest you was pr my you produced that. Was Pardon? You produced that film? Yes, yes, I, I produced it and uh, and played the lead in it. And it was probably uh, next to Bus Stop was the most important film of my career, I think. What was it about the material that, that you felt drawn to? You played the, the Hoodlum Priest, the title character. Yes, uh, what, was kind of, what was interesting about it, it was a, a real person. And uh, he he was uh, on the set, and uh, I could learn from from him from him actually uh, being like uh, the character that that I played. I uh, I uh, just performed uh, from watching him. So you modeled your behavior on his. Mm -hmm. We're going to be interviewing Kier Delay for our virtual conversation next week. And he was your co-star. Pierre Delay was such a wonderful actor. What a performance he gave. Uh, I think that uh, he deserved to, to be uh, awarded a, an Academy Award for his performance. I thought he was so astonishingly good. Uh, I, I find him unforgettable. Yes. And, and such a wonderful person too, to work with. And, and people who, who don't know that film would probably be surprised by his performance. It's, it's think, different for him. Yes, it was different for him. And uh, I think they were surprised by a guest. And I, I was certainly so pleased because he gave a performance that was quite beyond anything that I conceived. Uh, it was really a brilliant performance. Now you later in your career you played uh, in films directed by legends: Francis Ford Coppola, Peggy Sue Got Married, right. and Franco Zeffirelli, Endless Love. Yes. Uh, were there any similarities between these two very famous directors? Well, the only similarity is that uh, they're both. Uh, just were devoted to realism. And uh, they, they directed the part uh, realistically and uh, we gave realistic performances um, because of his direction. Uh, very, very 
pleased to, to have him as my as my director. But Endless Love was not a successful film. No, it wasn't successful at the box office. That's no, true. at the box office. No. But wasn't it strange material for Zeffirelli to have been drawn to? Uh, I, I don't think it was strange material no, for him to be drawn to. It was something that could be acted realistically. And uh, he uh, that, that's the way he directed. He directed very realistically. So it, it didn't, you weren't surprised that the, the Italian maestro was directing this story? With no. No, I wasn't uh, surprised by that at all. Okay. Now, um, uh, you've done a lot of important television shows with just one or two highlights. Uh, you appeared in a TV movie with the great Sidney Poitier. Yes, that's true, yes. Sidney Poitier was a wonderful actor and wonderful to work with. And you appeared as the title role uh, in Billy Budd? Yes, that's right. That was that was really a, a very moving story. It was something that uh, really moved me tremendously. It was easy to play that part because it was written so so realistically. And you were um, in um, a fascinating TV show that people might not know called The Last Babylon. Oh, yes. The Last Babylon. Uh, that, that was really quite something. Well, that was about uh, the uh, uh, atomic war. And uh, for the world falls, falls into atomic warfare. Yes. Uh, Babylon. A very, so very, very, very moving script. Yes, terrific and courageous for the time. Courageous for the time. Later in your career, you returned to the stage. You did Norman Conquests on Broadway, same time next year on Broadway. That's right. You did a musical, which a friend of mine wants me to ask you about because he saw it and loved it, called Smith. Yes, that's right. I, I, I was so sad that that didn't have a long run because it was such fun to play. I think it was one of the most enjoyable parts I've ever played was uh, Smith. And you, in same time next year, you appeared on Broadway with your ex-wife, Hope That's Lang. Right. That accurate? That's right. We did. That's right. We were together in the play on Broadway. How did that work out? It worked out very well because we had uh, worked together uh, in, on television before that. And it was, uh, we had a similar way of working where both of us worked from a realistic uh, standpoint. We didn't, uh, we didn't uh, pretend to act things, we really felt things. Uh, and we, we both had that uh, kind of uh, training and that kind of experience. So that was wonderful to do the play with her. And there was not an issue playing with somebody who had been your wife. No, no, it wasn't, that, it wasn't for me. And then didn't you appear again on the stage with, with Hope in The Best Man, which I saw at the Amundsen in Los Angeles? Yes, in the Amundsen in, New York, in uh, Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah, she was in that with me. Yes. That was another really wonderful experience. Directed by Jose Ferrer? Yes, yes, and it was written by Gordon Vidal. Yes. So oh, it was distinguished, distinguished people, distinguished people were, were yes. doing that play. Yes. And you you came out of semi-retirement just recently when David Lynch asked you to play a role in the revived Twin Peaks. Yes. Now, uh, well, that was did you enjoy? Did you enjoy doing that? I loved doing that. That was really astonishing. I that came out of the blue. We offered to play that part. And uh, I really, really enjoyed it. And I had a good good time where my son, Michael, who's an actor and a writer himself, uh, uh, he, he drove me to work uh, every day and, and ran my lines with me. And uh, he, he helped me to play that, that part. I couldn't have done it without Michael. And, did, you, uh, did you enjoy returning to acting? 
Yes, I did. I do very much to return to acting, especially since it was such a good role and a good play. And will you do, will you act again if, if the right part comes along? Oh, definitely. I, I love acting. That's, uh, that's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> okay, I think we've covered quite a bit. Uh, Magda, do we want to take questions from the house? Well, um, I would like to just ask uh, about your training. What was your training? How did you, uh, your acting, before you started professionally, what kind of training did you have? Uh, my my training was uh, very much like the actor studio training. It was in in realistic uh, performances to use my own real emotions, not try to indicate emotions, but actually feel the emotions of the characters I play. So that that was that was my training. So it, it felt naturally working with Emma Marie Saint, who was trained the same way, uh, and uh, Francis. Franciosa, too. They're both trained in that way. American Academy. And the American Academy of Dramatic Arts uh, is uh, where I, I first uh, was able to use that, that method, the Stanislavski uh, method at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Don, I had a question for you. I saw that about five years ago, you were back on Long Island to go to your high school class in 1946. What was that like to meet the students and go, and go back to your, your roots? Well, it was really fun to go back to uh, high school and, and uh, see my, my friends from those, those days. And uh, I, uh, I had kept in touch with uh, several of the friends over the, over the years. So uh, seeing them like that and, and uh, working uh, with them uh, was was really a wonderful experience. Really, very very touching for me. Uh, we had a question in here um, to ask about: um, Did you always want to act? I think I wanted to, to, yeah, from the time I was four years old. I think I wanted to act. Uh, I I was on stage uh, in in a uh, uh, and, and play a, a musical. Uh, Play uh, and uh, I, I was uh, uh, played the part of a of a of a youngster uh, who was uh, caught kissing a girl uh, from behind a, a a beach umbrella, and then when it was rolled aside, the audience laughed and applauded. And I thought, well, people laugh and applaud, and uh, uh, who would have? Who would we want to do anything else with their life? <laughs> Why not? Please. Uh, actually, actually, uh, Kevin, I did want to ask uh, Don Don a question, um, if I could. Don. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you had two big successes on Knots Landing and the uh, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, and in both cases you sort of walked away from the experience. You were, you were offered to do the re a reprise to the Planet of the Apes film, and you didn't want to do it again. That's right. It, is it because you, you didn't want to repeat yourself? Or you yeah, I, 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 I didn't see any advantage in repeating myself or repeating the performance, uh, so I, I declined to do it. Had you enjoyed doing the first one, which it was a huge hit? Very much, very much. I, I really enjoyed it greatly. It was, it was fun. It was fun to be part of that series, of the series of the Planet of the Apes. But having done it once, you felt satisfied. You didn't need to yeah, that's, go that's back. Right. Yes, I and, didn't feel the need to go and, and do it again. And, felt, and Knott's Landing was a huge success, but you yes. didn't return to, they, they killed you off in the series, I believe. Yes, I, I asked them to do that, yes. I, I, I just had, had felt I had done enough of uh, that, that performance and uh, I didn't want to do any more. I just wanted to leave it at, at that. So you asked them to kill you off to find a storyline which you, your character would be eliminated. Yes, that's it. 
That's true. Any, any regrets? Any gr regrets? About that. Uh, only when I, I go to the bank. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, they were paying a lot, weren't they? <laughs> uh, yes. From uh, some of the other folks. Uh, Ted asked if you have any recollections of your 1969 TV horror thriller with Ray Milland and Jean Tierney, Daughter of the Mind. Oh yeah, that was a very, very interesting script. I, I really liked uh, doing that greatly. What was Ray Milland like? Ray Milland? Yeah. Oh, Ray, Ray Milland was a real, real gentleman and somebody that you really appreciated working with. Uh, he was very respectful of the material and uh, he gave his, his best work uh, always uh, for every take. He seemed to be at his best. A real, real delight to work with. Was uh, just one more, Was there anybody that was very difficult to work with that you could mention names? Or you know, you try not to remember. Anybody who was difficult? Everyone who was what? Difficult. difficult. Can you remember anyone, any one actor that was difficult uh, on the set and you would never work with them again? No, I never had that experience. Ah, interesting. Tell us, Don, about your TV show, The Outcasts which was really a pioneering effort at the time. Uh, that was marvelous to, have, to be with Otis Young, black actor, and uh, to, to play the, the part of cowboy uh, in, the, in the Wild West. That was a real joy to, to do that. Uh, I, I was sorry when, it, uh, when the series ended because it was one of my most enjoyable uh, roles that I've ever played. But, but having a, a black cowboy was at that time a sort of revolutionary statement. There weren't there weren't any precedent. You were you were actually pioneers at that time. That was very true, and uh, that was one of the reasons I did it. As a matter of fact, I said to him, uh, if if they don't have to play a, uh, a black actor, if they don't use a black actor, then I wouldn't do it. So uh, that that's was became part of the the deal that I had to be a black actor. And you you have been a long time. Would you call yourself a social activist or uh, a, an activist for racial justice? You 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 always had a social conscience in your life. Yeah, I tried to express that uh, both in my uh, personal life and also in the work I did and the roles I selected. I uh, selected roles that and may enable me to express my uh, sociological beliefs. And in in the war, you were with the Brethren Service. Tell us about that. Yes, I was in Brethren Service, uh, which was a forerunner of the Peace Corps, uh, and uh, I was in that uh, for uh, th th three years. And I uh, enjoyed that experience greatly and learned from it and was able to, uh, to do some, uh, some good things uh, that, that were, were helpful uh, in, in the world of uh, race relations. You also appeared in a film with the great Dick Gregory. Yes, I did. In a film. <laughs> yeah, Sweet Love Bitter uh, was a film I did with Dick Gregory and that was enjoyable to be with. Very enjoyable. We have more questions, uh, Kevin. Um, this was a question that came in from Jane. Um, uh, what was it like when you had to play opposite Alfred Ryder when Jason Robards dropped out of Billy Bud the day of the performance? Well, that was a, an amazing uh, experience because Alfred Ryder was wonderful in the part, in the part of the, the heavy. Uh, he, uh, he played the part so brilliantly and, and uh, it was a, a great success because of him. He was just marvelous to work with and I thought he was brilliant in the part. 
I know one of your favorites from TV, and I remember seeing this, in, I think in 1959 or 1960, Winter Set. Oh, yes, Winter Set was something that I really wanted to do from the time that I was a, a youngster at the American Academy of Dramatic, Dramatic Arts. I always wanted to do a uh, winter set. And when I got a chance to do it uh, on, on television, uh, under very, very good circumstances, uh, I, I uh, really jumped at the chance and, and then thoroughly enjoyed it. I noticed that your very first TV credit was in Shakespeare. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, uh, I, I played a, a bit part uh, in, this, in a Shakespearean uh, uh, play. Taming of the Shrew. The same Taming of the Shrew, yes. But you didn't return to Shakespeare. Pardon? You never returned to Shakespeare. No, no, I never returned to Shakespeare. Uh, Don, did you ever hang on to anything from your acting career? Any mementos or souvenirs or costumes? Yes, I, I, I do have some uh, that that uh, that I keep in my office. The hat, the jacket, the boots, the belt from bus stop. Yeah, the, boots, the, the, yeah. the hat, the jacket, the boots, the belt from bus stop. Wow. I got those. Yeah. And am I correct, Don, maybe we should end here, uh, that you are, in fact, engaged in writing your memoir? Yes, I've, I've already written my memoirs, as a matter of fact. And uh, I hope to, to see it uh, published. Uh, I was uh, asked to publish my memoirs uh, by Random House years ago. And uh, at that time, I didn't want it. To, to do it, uh, but I took, took time to do it this time because uh, I, I felt I had something to say that was uh, interesting to the audience. So that's when I, I did it. So, it, so it's, it's done, it's written. Yes, it's right. It's written. Yes. Yes, it's written. Well, on behalf of the Lambs, thank you very, very much for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Foster, for, for facilitating this. Uh, do you have any closing comments from Foster or from Don? Foster, do you have anything yes. to say? Yes. Uh, I, I find it always interesting what you say. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, 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 going to, I'm going to tell people that you have a birthday coming up, I believe, on July 31st. My goodness, that's true. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Don. Well, Happy birthday, Don Murray. And thank you so much for being willing to share these priceless memories with us. Uh, an extraordinary and long and distinguished career. You've worked with so many good people. And that's because you're pretty darn good yourself. <laughs> well, that's so nice to hear. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. You have a lot of fans. Thank you so much and be well and hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank again. you. I hope to see you Bye. again. Bye-bye, yeah. Don. Thanks, Bye -bye. Don. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.